before the Aztecs and before the Maya, there were a culture who are referred to as the Olmecs. They are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America, that they create structures on a massive scale, that you can see connections between them and the later. And what the, what the DNA is doing is uh, it's telling us that there was something really weird. The Amazon rainforest has fascinated explorers, researchers, and storytellers for ages. In a distant part of this dense jungle, scientists have recently made a stunning discovery that shatters our understanding of the past, the land, and human societies that call this jungle home. They found a hidden cave, untouched for many lifetimes, suddenly revealing itself and shaking the very foundations of our knowledge. What mysteries lie within its depths? In the remote corners of this vast wilderness, what secrets await discovery? Join us as we delve deep into the heart of the Amazon to unravel the mysteries of an ancient cave that defies logic. The Ancient Colossal Heads In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, there was a surge of curiosity about ancient civilizations, especially during the Victorian era. This enthusiasm was fueled by cultural trends in exploration and colonization, along with a romantic fascination with uncovering lost cultures. Major institutions like museums and universities in Europe and the United States began funding expeditions to find ancient artifacts and learn about the history of indigenous civilizations in the Americas. During this period, archaeology started to transform from mere treasure hunting into a more scientific discipline. Archaeologists began to focus on careful excavation and detailed analysis, which marked a significant shift in the field. It also became apparent that Native Americans had a complex genetic history with diverse influences, challenging the stereotypical idea of a singular Native American appearance. Interestingly, many artifacts discovered during this time, such as the colossal stone heads and other structures, were often mistakenly attributed to well-known civilizations like the Maya or Aztecs. This was because the distinct characteristics of these artifacts were not immediately recognized, partly due to a lack of understanding of the region's pre-Columbian history. Notable explorers like John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood played pivotal roles in generating interest in Mesoamerican cultures. Their explorations and writings, particularly their books on travels in Central America and the Yucatan, captivated the public and helped to shed light on the rich and diverse histories of these ancient civilizations. Their detailed descriptions and vivid illustrations captured the public's imagination sparking a wave of interest in these ancient cultures. Although they primarily focused on the Maya, their method of systematically documenting their findings and blending travel stories with scholarly observations had a lasting impact on future archaeologists studying Mesoamerica. For a long time, archaeologists have known about unusual skulls found in parts of Brazil that show distinct Polynesian or African features, similar to those seen on the Olmec heads. Around this period, a trend emerged in comparative archaeology, where discoveries from various parts of the world were compared, helping to place Mesoamerican civilizations in a global context. Museums began to evolve from merely storing artifacts to becoming centers of research and education, playing a crucial role in spreading knowledge about ancient cultures. This era also marked the beginning of interdisciplinary approaches in archaeology, integrating fields like anthropology, linguistics, and early environmental science. This broader approach has been instrumental in developing a richer and more detailed understanding of ancient civilizations, including the fascinating and intricate MCH culture. Back in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as Western archaeologists ventured into Mesoamerica, they stumbled upon colossal stone heads, some towering over nine feet tall and weighing tons. These heads were striking, with flat noses, chubby cheeks, and often adorned with helmet-like headgear. However, Despite their grandeur and distinctive features, their true cultural significance remained elusive at first. These massive carved human heads, some weighing as much as 20 to 25 tons, displayed curious characteristics that puzzled researchers. They didn't quite fit the typical features of Native Americans and were instead interpreted as having resemblances to Polynesian or African origins. Jose Melgar Sano made one of the earliest significant discoveries in 1862 at Tres Zapotes in Veracruz. Long ago, someone stumbled upon what we now recognize as one of the earliest colossal heads of the Olmec civilization. 
Melgarsano, the discoverer, even remarked that the head had features resembling those from Ethiopia. This insight gives us a peek into the beliefs and judgments of that time. This discovery didn't immediately trigger a widespread understanding of the Olmec culture. For a while, these colossal heads were merely seen as curious curiosities, rather than pieces of a grander cultural puzzle. It took many years, and much more digging before people truly grasped the importance of these heads. Initially, many believed these artifacts might belong to other familiar civilizations like the Maya or the Aztecs, because the idea of the Olmec civilization being a unique early Mesoamerican society wasn't firmly established yet. It wasn't until the middle of the 20th century when archaeologists like Matthew Sterling led more organized excavations that the real story started to unfold. As they unearthed more colossal heads and other relics, the significance of the Olmec civilization began to shine. This helped solidify the Olmec as a notable and influential civilization in their own right, existing before and possibly influencing others such as the Maya and the Aztecs. The Mysteries of San Lorenzo in 1945, a significant expedition led by Matthew Sterling set out on a remarkable journey to San Lorenzo, nestled in the heart of what was once MCH territory. This expedition wasn't your run-of-the-mill adventure, it was backed by none other than the prestigious Smithsonian Institution, recognizing the immense potential in unraveling the mysteries of the Olmec sites. These sites held keys to understanding Mesoamerican prehistory, a puzzle waiting to be solved. Before Sterling's arrival, there had been some exploration in the area, sparked by the discovery of colossal stone heads. While these findings were intriguing, they only scratched the surface of what lay beneath. The area was simply too vast to cover entirely. So, they embarked on an initial survey, a meticulous process that demanded much time and careful planning. Eventually, they pinpointed the most promising spots to start excavating. Every shovel full of earth required precision. The artifacts buried beneath were ancient and delicate, susceptible to damage from both age and humid conditions. Carefully they unearthed each piece, mindful of its fragility. They carefully catalogued each find, noting its exact location and every detail. This careful record-keeping was vital for unraveling the site's mysteries later on. What they uncovered at San Lorenzo was nothing short of astounding. It revealed itself to be one of the oldest and most significant cities in Mesoamerica dating back to a staggering 1,200 to 900 BCE. This predates even well-known civilizations like the Maya and Aztecs. The symbolism they uncovered wasn't unique to the Maya. The Olmec people also used it. So what people commonly call the Mayan calendar is, in fact, an ancient Olmec calendar. The discoveries they made, particularly the enormous stone heads, were truly remarkable. Crafted from single blocks of basalt, these artifacts boasted distinctive facial features that showcased the incredible skill of their creators. The meticulous effort invested at San Lorenzo played a key role in unraveling the mysteries of the Olmec civilization. It provided invaluable insights into their timeline and highlighted the sophistication of their society. Exploring the depths of San Lorenzo is crucial for comprehending the Olmec civilization, as it is recognized as one of the oldest major cities in Mesoamerica dating back to around 1200 to 900 BCE, long predating well-known civilizations like the Maya and Aztec. Radiocarbon dating played a vital role in establishing the chronology of the site, offering a clearer understanding of the Olmec's activities. Among the most renowned discoveries at San Lorenzo are the colossal heads, giant sculptures intricately carved from single blocks of basalt. These heads are distinguished by their unique facial features, including almond-shaped eyes and broad noses. Many of them also sport elaborate headdresses, possibly indicating high status or serving ceremonial purposes. There's still plenty of talk swirling around about what all those symbols etched into the stones could mean. It's truly astonishing when you think about the colossal size of these stone heads, some towering up to three meters high and weighing a whopping 50 tons. Just envision the incredible craftsmanship and precision required to carve such monumental sculptures. But it's not just the heads that were uncovered. Among the discoveries were delicate jade figurines and a variety of pottery styles, offering us intriguing glimpses into the daily lives, artistic expressions, and trading practices of these ancient peoples. The presence of jade artifacts hints at extensive trade networks, as jade wasn't something you'd stumble upon just anywhere. The remnants of large structures, 
like expansive platforms and potential elite residences, hint at a highly organized society with the means to undertake grand construction projects. The layout of San Lorenzo is particularly captivating, with its clearly defined central axis indicating careful planning and design. San Lorenzo was a well-organized ancient city with distinct areas for ceremonies and living, suggesting a complex urban layout and social hierarchy. Discoveries from San Lorenzo have been incredibly important in helping us understand the middle-classic Holmel-style civilization. They've provided us with a clearer timeline and revealed the complexity of their society. The wide range of artifacts, from the massive stone heads to the intricately designed pottery, shows that the people of San Lorenzo were not only masterful stone carvers, but also talented artists and craftsmen. These finds give us a fascinating glimpse into their world, showing us how these ancient people lived, worked, and created remarkable works of art. It's like peering through a window into a long-lost era, where the sophistication of their urban planning and the variety of their skills come to life. Unveiling La Venta. After the thrilling discoveries at San Lorenzo in the 1940s, Archaeologists set their sights on La Venta, another significant Olmec site in Tabasco, Mexico, during the 1950s. This shift was huge because La Venta provided a fresh perspective on the Olmec civilization, one of the earliest complex societies in Mesoamerica. The explorations at La Venta were more focused and systematic, thanks to the efforts of archaeologists like Philip Drucker and Robert Heiser. These experts weren't just digging around, they incorporated techniques from other fields like anthropology and geology, offering a richer understanding of Olmec culture. La Venta is incredibly important for studying the peak of Olmec civilization. The site flourished from around 900 to 400 BCE, a period when the Olmecs were at the height of their artistic and architectural achievements. One of the most remarkable features of La Venta is the Great Pyramid. Unlike the stone pyramids of Egypt, this one is made of earth and clay, and has a distinctive conical shape. It was one of the largest structures in ancient Mesoamerica at the time, highlighting the Olmec's impressive ability to organize and execute large-scale construction projects. The pyramid at Lenta was likely more than just a grand building. It is believed to have been a central location for ceremonies and religious activities, acting as the heart of ritual life. The way the pyramid and other structures at Lenta were built, along with their alignment with astronomical bodies, shows that the builders were quite skilled in engineering and astronomy. Lenta was probably a vibrant cultural hub where important ceremonies and gatherings took place. When archaeologists began excavating at Lenta, they took a new approach, being very systematic about it. They focused on the layers of soil and the context of each artifact they found. However, they faced significant challenges due to the tropical climate and the fact that many Olmec structures were made of earth which made preserving and understanding these findings difficult. They had to be extremely meticulous in recording everything they uncovered, providing a wealth of information for future analysis. Much like San Lorenzo, Lenta is renowned for its massive basalt heads carved from huge boulders. These heads are believed to represent Olmec rulers or other prominent figures in their society. The site is like a treasure collection filled with altars adorned with intricate carvings depicting people, animals and fascinating symbolic scenes. And then there's jade. The collection of jade artifacts is simply mesmerizing, ranging from exquisitely carved figurines to Celts. These weren't just pretty trinkets, they showcased the remarkable skill of the MCHS people and hinted at extensive trade networks, as jade wasn't locally available. The burial sites they uncovered revealed a complex tapestry of elaborate practices. They stumbled upon mosaic pavements crafted from serpentine, along with an array of offerings, each likely laden with profound religious significance. All these discoveries from Lenta have played a key role in unraveling the mysteries surrounding the Alchs, their societal structure, religious beliefs, and artistic prowess. It's like putting together pieces of a grand puzzle to understand the rich variety of their civilization. Maintaining Lenta for future research is tough. The SES faces challenges from nature and humans so it's vital to preserve this special place. It's not only important for archaeology lovers, but also for understanding a significant part of human history. What's cool about Lenta is that it's thought to be the earliest advanced civilization in Central America. They built huge structures, and people can see similarities between them and the later Maya civilization. The Maya were super into the sky, especially the Milky Way. 
they saw it as the path to their underworld, Zalba, in the lush lands of Central America. The ancient Maya were like wizards, creating a civilization that still leaves us in awe today. Among their mysteries, their deep knowledge of astronomy stands out, showing how smart they were. Graham Hancock's Journey Through Time Graham Hancock, a modern adventurer fascinated by ancient mysteries, delves deeply into the world of the Maya. He proposes intriguing ideas that push the boundaries of what we traditionally believe about history. Hancock suggests that the enigmatic Mayan calendar wasn't solely the creation of the Maya themselves, but was inherited from an even older civilization called the Alks, who used similar symbols. In essence, he sees the Maya calendar as an extension of this ancient tradition. The Maya Long Count calendar, a remarkable feat of ancient engineering, carefully tracked a 5,125-year cycle with astonishing accuracy. Beyond being a mere timekeeping tool, it reflected a profound understanding of the celestial rhythms that governed the Maya's daily lives, weaving them intricately into the cosmic hanging. Hancock suggests that such precision hints at a deeper, perhaps inherited knowledge of astronomy from a civilization lost to time. When one gazes upon the majestic structures of the Maya, such as the pyramid at Chichen Itza, their astronomical skills become noticeable, especially during the equinoxes, when the interplay of light and shadow on the pyramid creates the illusion of a serpent descending its steps. Hancock sees these architectural wonders not merely as buildings but as celestial maps, revealing an advanced comprehension of the universe encoded within stone. Orion played a big role in the Mayans' beliefs about rebirth. They saw Orion's three belt stars as the turtle of rebirth. In Egypt, Orion was also important, but among the Maya, it was linked to Ion and the Milky Way. The Maya knew about the ecliptic, the path the sun, moon, and planets take across the sky. This added to Graham Hancock's theories. He thought the Maya's ability to predict eclipses and track Venus, which they saw as the god Kulan, showed how much they knew about the stars. Hancock wondered if they learned all this from an older civilization lost in time. He thought maybe the Maya were part of a big group of ancient civilizations that shared knowledge. This group might have used the seas and continents to connect. Hancock called this idea the global maritime culture. He believed this culture could have helped pass advanced knowledge about astronomy and architecture to the Maya. Looking at the Maya's buildings, like their pyramids and temples, it's clear they had impressive engineering skills. Their architecture seems too advanced for their time. Did they learn these skills from an even older civilization? Maya's math was also ahead of its time. They used zero, which wasn't common in ancient times. This was crucial for their astronomy calculations. Hancock suggests that our deep understanding of math might not solely belong to us. He proposes the idea that there could have been an ancient society, now forgotten, that was incredibly advanced. Imagine a civilization existing long before the ones people know from history books, thriving in ways we can't even imagine. This society, Hancock assumes, might have flourished before the end of the last ice age, roughly around 10,000 BCE. They weren't just any group of people, they were masters of astronomy, architecture, and math. In Hancock's captivating narrative, this ancient civilization isn't just a footnote in history. It's a central character, overshadowed by a global catastrophe. He weaves a tale of mystery and interest, suggesting that this advanced society's legacy was erased by some fierce event. It's like uncovering a lost chapter in humanity's story, a chapter that was wiped clean, leaving us to piece together the fragments. Imagine a world where the ancient Maya civilization, among others, was influenced by this forgotten society. Hancock paints a vivid picture of a civilization whose reach extended far beyond its own time and space, leaving its mark on cultures across the globe. In essence, Hancock believes that there's more to our past than meets the eye. He challenges people to reconsider what we know about history and to explore the possibility that there were civilizations before us civilizations that were anything but primitive. However, the tale of an ancient global society in Hancock's narrative came to a dramatic and awful conclusion. He assumes that a colossal event, like a comet striking the Earth or an immense flood, nearly wiped out this civilization. 
Yet amidst the destruction, some managed to survive. These survivors, carrying with them the wisdom of their advanced civilization, embarked on a journey into the unknown. They traveled to other, less advanced societies, sharing their knowledge and sparking the beginnings of new civilizations. Among these, according to Hancock, were the Mayans. He suggests that the Maya might have been one of the many groups inheriting the legacy of this lost civilization. Hancock highlights the Maya's remarkable achievements in architecture and astronomy as proof of this influence. Their precise calendar systems, deep understanding of celestial patterns, and the alignment of their structures with astronomical events, he argues, could be more than just their innovations. They might be echoes of a heritage passed down from a civilization darkened by the mists of time. He compares how different ancient cultures built their buildings, what they believed in, and what they knew about stars and planets. He thinks that these similarities might come from them all knowing something similar long ago. People know now that around 12,800 to 11,600 years ago, big disasters happened globally, like sudden rises in sea levels. This changed things a lot. Suddenly, the idea of a big flood everywhere wasn't just a story, but something people remembered. This mixes with old sea stories and the Maya calendar, making it all very mysterious. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Scientists just discovered an ancient cave in the Amazon that defies logic. Deep within the dense foliage of the Amazon rainforest, where shadows dance with secrets untold, lay a cave forgotten by time. Its entrance, concealed by creeping vines and the whispers of ancient spirits, beckoned only the most daring to unveil its mysteries. A team of courageous scientists, fueled by curiosity and driven by the allure of the unknown, ventured into the heart of the jungle. Guided by whispers of legends and the faint echoes of forgotten tales, they stumbled upon the fabled entrance. As they descended into the yawning abyss, the air thickened with anticipation and every step echoed like a heartbeat in the darkness. But what they discovered within defied all logic. The walls of the cavern pulsed with an ethereal glow, as if infused with the very essence of the universe. Symbols, older than memory itself, adorned the stone, telling stories of civilizations lost to time. In the heart of the cave, they found a chamber bathed in an otherworldly light. Crystalline formations jutted from the ground like the spires of an ancient city, casting prisms of color that danced upon the walls. But the true marvel lay dormant at the chamber's center, a colossal crystal, pulsating with energy and radiating a warmth that defied explanation. Its surface rippled like liquid light, revealing glimpses of worlds beyond the realm of mortal understanding. As the scientists approached, their minds filled with wonder and awe, they realized that they stood on the threshold of something greater than themselves, a doorway to realms unseen. And as they gazed upon the ancient crystal, they knew that their journey had only just begun, for within its depths lay the answers to questions yet unasked, and the promise of discoveries yet untold. What do you think about this discovery of the ancient cave deep in the Amazon rainforest? Let us have your opinions in the comment below. The Amazon's Hidden Wonders Graham Hancock, a storyteller uncovering a hidden history, imagines a past where the world wasn't separated by oceans but linked by them. He envisions an ancient global culture skilled in sailing and building ships, connecting distant civilizations through sea voyages. Hancock sees similarities in architectural styles and beliefs among ancient cultures, hinting at shared knowledge spread through maritime networks. He suggests that ancient seafarers, like Polynesian navigators, could have possessed remarkable skills. Hancock believes people should take the Atlantis story seriously, suggesting it might have been a real civilization lost in a great flood around 11,600 years ago. He also delves into the mysterious Maya civilization and their calendar, which ends on December 21st, 2012. Rather than a doomsday event, Hancock interprets this as a significant moment in Maya cosmology, possibly marking a shift in human consciousness. He discusses how ancient civilizations measured time and aligned with astronomical events, suggesting that history is punctuated by cataclysms that shape human progress. In Hancock's narrative, these cataclysms aren't just disasters, 
but key moments that reset civilization. The Amazon basin covers a whopping 7 million square kilometers, but a huge chunk of it, about 52 million square kilometers, has been largely ignored by archaeologists until recently. In this uncharted territory, surprising discoveries are being made, challenging what we thought we knew about the Amazon. Hidden within the jungle are thousands of ancient structures, similar to Stonehenge, now coming to light due to deforestation and new archaeological techniques. These findings, made possible by aerial surveys, satellite imagery and ground expeditions, reveal a sophisticated past with advanced societies. One remarkable example is the Cuicugu complex in the Brazilian Amazon, offering insights into urban planning and societal organization centuries before European contact. Nestled in the remote jungle, Cuicugu showcases a network of settlements, strategically positioned to utilize natural resources efficiently. These settlements were connected by straight roads, carefully aligned with cardinal directions, demonstrating remarkable planning and coordination. A canal system indicates advanced hydraulic engineering, possibly used for transportation and water management. The variety of structures within the complex suggests a hierarchical society, with different social or functional roles. Estimates indicate that at its peak, Kuikugu could have supported tens of thousands of people, indicating a thriving civilization. Rediscovering Kuikugu was no small feat. It began with aerial surveys and satellite images, followed by extensive ground excavations led by archaeologists like Michael Heckenberger. Advanced techniques like LIDAR helped map the area accurately through the forest canopy. Carbon dating revealed that Kuhikugu was inhabited for several centuries, dating back to 800 AD. Artifacts such as pottery, tools, and ornaments offer glimpses into daily life and creativity. This discovery challenges the notion of the Amazon as an untouched wilderness before European arrival, showing it was home to a complex society. Kuhikugu's sustainable practices, advanced farming techniques, and harmony with the environment offer valuable lessons for today. This discovery made us rethink how indigenous societies in the Amazon manage the land and shape the landscape. The biodiversity in the Amazon today might be thanks to ancient civilizations. The variety of plants near archaeological sites is much greater than in other areas. Some trees, like Brazil nuts and ice cream beans, are valuable food crops. Marco Island at the Amazon River's mouth is a time capsule of the Marara culture from 800 to 14,400 CE. It's incredibly diverse and provides everything for the Marua people's lifestyle. They were known for their artistic ceramics and built massive earth mounds. They had a clear structure, different roles for men and women, advanced farming techniques, and traded goods and ideas. Santarem was a bustling hub of trade and culture. People there were known for their intricate pottery, which reflected their culture and beliefs. Their pottery-making techniques were advanced, showing expertise in chemistry and kiln construction. The variety of pottery styles suggests cultural mixing. Santarem was organized with separate areas for living, working, and gatherings. The pottery gives insight into their daily lives and connections with others. Geoglyphs in the Amazon, especially in Acre and Rondonia, are like a hidden world under the forest canopy. The Mystery of Ancient Maps In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, technology like satellite imagery revealed ancient earthworks hidden by deforestation. Over 450 of these designs, called geoglyphs, were found in the Amazon. They're not just simple lines, but huge drawings spanning kilometers in various shapes. Some have intricate patterns, hinting at a highly organized society. These geoglyphs were likely made by removing the top layer of soil and vegetation to reveal the lighter colored earth below. Graham Hancock, referencing the Perry race map from 1513, suggests ancient civilizations had advanced knowledge. Despite only a third of the map surviving, it details parts of Europe, North Africa, and Brazil. Hancock focuses on its depiction of an ice-free Antarctica over 6,000 years ago, proposing a lost civilization. The map was likely compiled from earlier sources, including charts from Christopher Columbus, and possibly even older maps. If true, this idea suggests ancient sailors might have mapped Antarctica before it was officially found. Critics say the map might just be a mistake or made up. The map from 1513 is impressive because it accurately shows distances at sea, something not possible until much later. 
Some say this means they had advanced navigation skills. Others think it could be luck or exaggeration. Hancock thinks the map even shows mountains in Antarctica, unknown until recently, suggesting ancient knowledge. Critics say these could be mistakes or symbols, not real features. Hancock's theory about ancient maps sparks debate about history and archaeology. He argues that these maps show detailed knowledge beyond their time. Some older maps even include features not officially recognized until later. This leads him to suggest they come from an ancient civilization lost to history. It's like he's hinting at a forgotten part of our past, one where people knew the world better than we thought. Hancock's theory dives deep into the tech side, suggesting the original map makers were crazy good at navigation, way before they should have been. It's like they had gadgets from the future. He's on to something big, saying ancient civilizations knew way more about the world than we thought. They might have even had tools to track time and find their way around. Hancock's idea is gripping. He thinks ancient knowledge got lost in big disasters or just faded away over time. But some of it survived, trickling down through stories and maps. He links myths and legends from different cultures to this lost wisdom, like how flood stories might be about real events. It's a bold take, challenging what we think we know about our past. What do you think about this recent discovery of the ancient cave deep in the Amazon rainforest that defies all expectations? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below.